Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Coach the Coach Radio. Brought to you by the Business Radio X Ambassador Program, the no-cost business development strategy for coaches who want to spend more time serving local business clients and less time selling them. Go to brxambassador.com to learn more. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Coach the Coach Radio, and this is going to be a good one. Today we have with us Ivy Slater with Slater Success. Welcome, Ivy. Lee, thank you for having me. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us a little bit about Slater Success. How are you serving folks? So Slater Success is a coaching and consulting company. I'm a speaker, author, trainer. Um, I help leaders really be their best. We will come into um, organizations and help them scale and grow. We look at a variety of things from team to financial to marketing strategies, building books of business, and truly that help that leader who's in charge of it all work at the top of their game so could they lead to their organizations and achieve what their goals are. So now what's your backstory? How'd you get into this line of work? Were you always a coach? Oh, goodness, no. Um, you, th- this is, uh, this. I'd love to say the second, it's actually the second business I've owned. Um, before this, I was in the printing industry in New York City. I was uh, where I raised my kids. Uh, I would say I, I grew a printing company and grew some children at the same time. I was in the industry for over 20 years. So I truly uh, led the growth of that business. Head of sales, you know, kind of like, what we'll say is that, you know, you wash the windows, you do the sales, you do the finance, you build a seven figure company in a very male dominated world. And I was I had a great, great period of time until I reached my mid 40s. And I was like, what am I going to do when I grow up? You know, like, what's the legacy I leave behind? I'm making a great living. I built a seven figure organization. But what about me? What am I leaving behind? What, what's, what's significant here? And that's when I knew I needed to look at my next chapter. And then um, out of all the choices, uh, you chose coaching. What drew you to coaching? Um, I'm going to say, I don't know if I chose it or if it was just something I did. So um, 100% midlife crisis at 45 and I was with a, a friend of mine. We were working out. We were in caught for those of New York City or New York area listeners. We were do, doing walking legends as one of the New York City parks. And I said, I don't know what I'm going to do next. You know, what's this legacy like? I'm going to be, I'm going to lead. I had all these gold dreams and aspirations, you know, in my younger self. I built a great organization, but what happens next? And she goes, you ought to be a coach. And my response was soccer. And she like laughs hysterically. I'm like, come on, you know, I can't, I was a dancer. I have a degree in dance, a degree in communications. And I said, you know, I I blew out my knee in my early twenties. You, what, what are you talking about? And she looked at me and she said, you know what, Ivy, you helped me build my business. You helped me see past what I thought was possible. You expanded my horizons. I started, you know, growing a business, you know, reaching levels I never reached before. I said, okay, but what's with the coaching thing? And granted, this was 07. So coaching in 07 wasn't necessarily what coaching is today. And I went home, you know, after we, we finished our workout, you know, give each other a sweaty hug and I go home and I hit the computer and I was like, what is coaching? And of course, soccer comes up, basketball, tennis. And then somewhere around page three, we got into what, what the, the newer, at that point, industry of coaching was. And I said, well, what does this look like? Like, what do I need to know? And, I, you know, Lee, I am a huge fan of market research. And I think we so often forget to do it. And it's so important and so impactful. So I went to what my belief system was, is let's, let's find things out in the marketplace. So I started mentioning it and talking to every person I knew about, have you heard about this industry called coaching? What is it? What does it mean? Do I go back to college? Do I'm getting a degree in therapy, psychotherapy explained further? Is this a business thing? You know, I'm not really the person who's going to sit on the couch and listen to people's problems. You know, I'm a solution oriented businesswoman. What does that mean in this field? 
Um, so I truly, truly interviewed people. Uh, I spoke to my attorney. I spoke to my accountant. I spoke to other professionals in the in, in various different degrees of industry. Um, and I just uh, immersed myself in 30 days of market research. And it might not sound like a lot, but you also have to, you know, I am who I am. I'm a businesswoman. I'm a decision maker. And I was like, I wanted to know enough to make a decision to take an action to then make my next decision. So is this actually something I'm going to be interested in? Why would it interest me? What impact can I leave? What legacy? Like, who do, does it align with Ivy Slater as a woman, as a businesswoman, as a mother, as, a, you know, in all the facets of Ivy? And so I did that. And then when I said, I think this makes sense, I sat down and this happened in April, started in April of 07. I'm going to tell you by the end of May, June 1, at that time, I was enrolled in a coach certification program. Now, um, as a dancer, you mentioned being a dancer at the start of, I guess, your career. Um, did you have a coach then? I, we had, to, you know, you as a dancer, you're in class every day. Even if you're in a show, you're in class every day. You know, you have to have your foundation down. And I strongly believe in mentors, in teachers, in coaches. You know, a dancer doesn't look at a coach. You look at your mentor, your teacher. You know, you might be following this specific teacher in modern dance or in ballet or in this theory or, you know, in this style or that. But you are immersing yourself 100%. So early on... I thought it would be really easy to build Slater success. I was like, I know what I'm doing. I've built a business before. I, I know what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And, you know, Lee, complete transparency. The first couple of years was not good. And I'm being really polite. Okay. If you didn't have me on air, I would probably put in a much, much more harsh um, answer, but it really, really stunk. I was like, I was used to pulling in X amount of money and running a business, a salary, a, a, you know, building out clients. And I was like, this is not happening. And I had to kind of stop and say, what can I do about this? And how can I do it? And I said, well, Ivy, there's things, obviously, you know, and there's a ton of things you don't know. And are you going to move your pride away and hire somebody who could show you what you don't know? And, and I did. Now, um, so as a dancer, you leaned on mentors, experts, we'll call them whatever you want, but some sort sure. of coaching to help you get to a, a new level in your dance. In your business, when you were in printing, did you have the same infrastructure? Did you have mentors and coaches or people that helped you achieve success there? Or was that kind of on your back? Um, I always, always believed myself in surrounding myself with people who were smarter than me. So um, there was, you know, when I got involved in printing, I was in my late 20s. And there was this great, great guy who was in my world. And he, he owned several different printing organ printing co he owned actually two different printing companies he owned pieces of the building he was a great businessman and i would just you know say hey rich can i talk to you i was like can i ask you some questions and you know it would be notorious of i would be like one of the early jobs on press in the morning and i'd show up with like an extra cup of coffee and like like my, have my eye out for him you know hey can i ask you about this and he's like yeah 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 come sit down ivy and then it would be like, you know, who you, you really need to talk to Larry outside. Larry's going to be great with giving, sharing this information with you. And I always believed in surrounding myself with people who know more than me. And if you want to, you know, I look at it as coaching. I look at it as today for Slater success. Um, we're in our 13th plus year and I still have a coach in my world. Because Lee, if I didn't, I would be spending all the time focusing on my clients' goals, their organizations, and forget to put the work into my own organization. And is that a challenge you find with other coaches is that sometimes it's like the cobbler's children, you know, they're focused 
so much on their clients that they're not kind of doing the t- uh, the blocking and tackling for their own organization? It, a thousand percent true. You know, we, we especially so many people who go into the coaching field are givers. We were here to help. We're here to make a difference. We're help, here to help others. And you have to remember the theory about putting your oxygen mask on first. If you don't help yourself, you can't help others. And I think it's important to always have somebody is holding you accountable, somebody that you have that special place that you can work on your organization, that you can work on yourself, you can work on your goals, your dreams, your desires. Because if not, we just fall into the same patterns every day. And then you probably don't even recognize you're in those patterns. A thousand percent. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, I was recently, I took a couple of days off and I went to like a spa type of um, hotel, I don't know, whatever, retreat um, with my daughter. We did a a mommy daughter thing for a few days in in May, Mother's Day, et cetera, et cetera. And as a former dancer, they had this wall of quotes up. And I love, I love some great quotes. I'm always attracted to quotes. I have always been. And all of a sudden, I didn't even see who wrote the quote, but I looked at the quote and I said, oh, that's you, Ivy. It's talking to you. And then I saw who wrote it and I was like, of course it is. So if you look at, so he, he was never my, my mentor officially, because I've never met him in my life, but he was somebody I looked up to and admired and followed my entire dance world. And the quote said, I do not try to dance better than anyone else. I only try to dance better than myself. And I saw it was written by Baryshnikov. And growing up, Mikhail Baryshnikov was my idol, my, you know, my unofficial mentor, right? Um, If I could have paid him to coach me, believe me, you know, um, if I could have found a way, I would have. I so admired what he did. I admired admired his his innovation, his determination, his uniqueness, his willing to push boundaries. And I've always done the same thing for myself and not because I'm in competition with any other coaches out there. I want us all to succeed because we could all make a huge difference. But if we sit complacent and, and do just what we do, and we try to get another client, and we don't work on better and improving ourselves on a regular basis. We're not being of service to every person we touch. Right. I think it's almost kind of your duty to be kind of that uh, lifelong learner, continuous learner, and try to make yourself as good as you can be so that you can serve your clients even more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now you Believe bring in it- that 100%. Now, you bring up an excellent point of mentors and coaches can come in a lot of forms. Uh, It can be somebody, you know, you read about, saw a TED Talk on. It it doesn't have to be a formal coaching uh, relationship, uh, but uh, having a relationship with some sort of coach is kind of key, I think, for people to to get out of their own way and maybe eliminate some of the self-sabotage or some of the biases or... um, kind of issues that they've created for themselves that they may not see. And and that's where uh, elevating these informal coaching through an author or uh, inspirational quote or something like that, where you need that person that's kind of giving fresh eyes to your organization. It, it serves us all, you know, um, I think it's, it's a, of service to us all. There are always going to be challenging times. There's also times of expansion. You know, and we live, in, we live in a world of abundance. It's so easy to get caught up in, especially in running a business. Because one of the things I say about coaching, coaching is not a business. Coaching is a modality a business delivers. So what is, can I walk me through what you mean by that? Okay. So um, I have been brought in by various coaching, coach training organizations to talk about this in theory. Being a coach is not having a business. Being a coach is a modality. Coaching is a modality a business delivers. Slater Success is a coaching consulting training company. One of the things we do is we do coaching. So we will help our clients create their strategy. And we will 
work with them, holding them accountable to the actionable steps. And in that accountability, there's always a lot of coaching in there. What obstacles are coming up? What is holding you back? Where are you hitting that brick road? Where are you hitting that dead end? Where, right? But as a business model, right? Remember, I'm a businesswoman. I've been a business woman for over 25 years, plus, plus, but don't talk, don't say that to anybody, guys. Um, it's what is the business structure? So, you know, so many people are like, well, I, I coach. I was like, okay, why do you coach? Who are the people coming to you? What is the problem they have? How are you going to deliver your service? How are you going to scale that? What are you looking to achieve in the goals of your organization? So coaching is something that is a delivered piece, but it's not the business itself. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's just one of your deliverables. Right. And any coach we work with is what what is the coaching they're delivering? Sometimes it's marketing. Sometimes it's sales, right? Sometimes it's strategy. Sometimes it's inner work. Sometimes it's life work. Sometimes it's transformation. Sometimes there's, you know, um, grief coaching. There's so many things. What is the delivery of the coaching is something the business delivers, but it is not the business. Right. And so you help your clients kind of, uh, discern the difference between that and then maybe help them productize other types of deliverables? Right. Because coaching is something that can be delivered, but I'll never say coaching is actually the business. Right. And I because guess the business has a marketing structure, a sales structure, a financial structure, a team structure. We're right. That's a business. And then some people probably think that, oh, I'm going to be a coach and then I'm going to, and that's my business and I'll be doing coaching. And they don't realize that that's just one thing they're delivering. Or even if it's the only thing they're delivering, it's just, they have to separate it from the business that they're getting into. Right. You have to look at yourself. So if you're a coach, are you also the CEO of that organization? Right. And the salesperson and the marketer and the Correct. and the service deliverer, like, you know, where does your job begin and end? And the, the mindset of looking at it as a CEO. So how, right, how are we going to deliver these services? Where are we growing this company to? Am I going to be the only coach? Are there going to be other coaches? Are there going to be group programs? Are we going to be doing trainings? Are we going to be doing workshops or seminars? Are we going to be speaking? Are we paid to speak? Are we not paid to speak? What does the whole thing look like? And then when you're working with your clients in this way, they're probably, these are like eye-opening um, kind of things for them where they're just like, oh yeah, I never looked at it that way. And all of a sudden now they have multiple revenue streams and they can really grow their business. Yeah, I don't love building a business on only one type of revenue stream because it leaves you vulnerable. You know, in the same, in the same way, you know, back when I was selling printing, I didn't agree with just having a, like, you know, just having a few big clients. It's like, well, you lose one client or something happens with that client. They get acquired, you know, uh, back in the day, Fairchild Publications was one of my biggest clients got acquired. Okay. They got acquired several times as they were my client. Um, but right. What is the impact? If, if that's one of your main revenue streams, when you have something that could be vulnerable in, in going through a global pandemic this last year, are people paying for one-on-one -on -one coaching? Do they want group? What are the new problems they're having? How are we rising to the occasion to listen to the problems that are occurring, occurring today? And how are we being of service in that area? Now, when you're working with your clients, um, do you have kind of a sweet spot of an ideal client or is this kind of um, industry agnostic or do you have a specialty? Um, I definitely work um, very much in the professional service area. So service-based businesses in the professional area. So I work with an enormous amount of law firms and attorneys uh, in the accounting space, uh, CPA, CFO organizations, financial organizations, a lot in the agency model area and some with some coaches and consultants who are looking to scale. Now, are they, what's the pain they're having before they hire Slater success? Have they plateaued or is it, are you working with individual kind of 
workers within the firm or are you working with the firm itself so you can serve all of their employees? Um, we come into two different areas. One, we will look, work with the leadership team on where they're looking to scale to next. So it could be that their leadership team has expanded and we come in and helping them now grow and expand to their next level with their leadership team. Sometimes we've brought in just about sales and sales teams and helping them um, in, in doing a lot of training and accountability on building a book of business. Um, I do a lot of leadership work in, and that could be from organizations that are reaching their first million to 10 million and more. Um, so it, sometimes it's, it's the, the C-suite and the top tier leadership. Sometimes it's within a department within an organization, depending upon the organization. Now, you mentioned at the beginning of your career, coaching was kind of a, it was more exclusive. Now, more and more mm-hmm. folks are, are kind of getting coached and believing in coaching. Are you finding that more organizations are offering coaching to their people? Well, I'm finding first thing is more organizations actually know what coaching is. So in my early days, we actually had to explain what, you know, the value, the value of bringing in a coach to an organization. Um, now it is a very common term. It's a common knowledge. So I, I think that's a huge win-win. Um, in, in, it's not unheard of if the organization brings it in. Sometimes people will say, oh, I want to join this, you know, um, peer mentoring coach group or something like that. And organizations will cover part of it or all of that. So it's a common conversation paid for and supported in various ways. So you're seeing that, but it being offered, it used to be a perk only for like the highest levels of the organization. Now that's kind of trickling down further. Yeah. It was either a perk for the highest tiers of the organization or somebody brought in or, um, a problem in the organization, they bring the coach in to fix. Right. The board was fixing the CEO yeah. with, with the coach. fixing the CEO. <laughs> um, this person on the, you know, they, they, they can't play nice in the ballpen. <laughs> right. um, can you come in and fix them? <laughs> fix Bob. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, I not work. I love to do. Um, I believe truly in elevating the whole team. And so in, in, in Alaska, here is a story, a quick story about a client in a large global organization, um, VP, and I was brought in to work with him. It was kind of like a perk they threw him. But he also had some goals that he was being passed over. So it was, it was, it was a win-win on both sides on, okay, we'll throw you a coach moment. And I will say after working with him for our contracted period of time, I always stay in touch with everyone. And what was really cool is it was about three to four months after we concluded in one of my just, you know, random touch phrase, Hey, just thinking about you want to check in, see how you're doing. And, you know, the response back was not only was I promoted, but two of my people on my team were promoted on based on how we're running this team now. And, you know, in one of my new acquisitions of what we're managing, the review on their people has been, you know, a a program they thought they were going to have to throw out is a program they're now loving. So that's what the long-term win is about. It's about full elevation of the team, not fixing the person. Wow. And that goes to the heart of what you got into this business for is to create that legacy and those ripple effects. That must be very kind of a rewarding uh, to be to hear that. That's where the joy is. Is the joy nowadays of seeing those kind of successes where you're seeing your clients and their your clients colleagues succeed based on your coaching as much as, you know, getting that big printing deal back in the day? You know, exactly. It, it's truly, it's the ripple effect and it's the relationships you build now and the, the relationships that last from here to eternity if you put the effort in. And that's that's a huge, huge ripple impact. Now, uh, seeing, you know, clients who have gone on to, whether they're a current client or a recently past client or a past, past, past client and staying in contact and them saying, oh my goodness, I, you know, I want to let you know this happened in my world, whether it be business, personal, whatever, but they're still owning the work that you guys did together. 
Now, let's talk about the importance of relationships. I know you wrote a book about uh, how relationships are kind of a, a, a keystone in growing a practice and a business. Absolutely. I, I will say uh, relationships are the golden ticket to success. When you actually work those relationships, there's somebody I had lunch with just in the, literally in the last couple of weeks that I go back close to 20 years with. When I followed the line of business we have done together from printing through coaching, through leadership, through referral sources, through this woman, it ties to seven figures through one relationship. Wow. That's amazing. And the, and just the fact that you track it is amazing. I mean, how many people are able to do that? I, I, I'm a numbers geek. I, 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 a number one, no, truthfully, I see and think in numbers. It might be the dancer in me that like grew up in counting forward and backward in eights. Um, more importantly, it's always believing numbers tell us a story. And are we actually willing to read that book? If somebody's out there that wants to learn more and take their practice, their business, their professional service agency to a new level. What is the website to get a hold of you or somebody on your team? Uh, it's slatersuccess.com. And then and the, and the feel book. Feel free to pilk, well, the book, if it's actually, if you go to slatersuccess.com and scroll on down, you will come to getting a free chapter from the bar to the boardroom. So in the bar to the boardroom, it's choreographing business success through authentic relationships. Um, please grab that free chapter. And then if it intrigues you, go to Amazon and grab the book. Well, Ivy, congratulations on all the success. And thank you so much for sharing your story today. Thank you for having me, Lee. It's been a joy. Well, you're doing important work and we appreciate you. Thank you. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on Coach the Coach Radio. 